Hey everybody, this is Boomer. Welcome back to another Slime Fun tutorial. We're going to spend the next five episodes here going over every single power generator inside of Slime Fun. That's right, we're going to talk about their power production, their buffers, whether they work in the nether or not. Do they need day, light, night, whatever it happens to be? Are they part of the light expansion nerf? We're going to talk about all of these. We're going to go through every single power generator and hopefully. We're going to figure out what are the best ones for the bang. But to start with today, we're going to talk about generators that require eco to function. In other words, generators that must be in water or must have wind. See, uh, step two in this series will involve the basic generators that run anywhere from one to 100 joules per second. Step three or part three will be up to about 500 joules. Part four will go up to about 2000. And then part five will be the big boomer dog ones. We're going to spend some time there, but let's get into these. Let's start. And, and by the way, these are put in order of the ones that I would probably not build first and finishing up with the ones that I probably would build first. And we'll talk to you about why I would not the specific reasons. Now they may work for you. For me personally, there's reasons why I don't do it, and that's because I like to get into these things quickly, and it's hard to do it when you can't generate the power. So we're going to start with equal power and the simple steam turbine. It generates 8 joules per second. It does not maintain a buffer. Now, it can work day or night, which is a benefit over solar. And the only other unfortunate thing is it doesn't work in another because it requires water. All three of these that we're going to look at require a magma cube block, a water source block, and then the generator above the water. The fence poles is here just to give me something to push it against so that it places right where it should be. So we're going to grab our simple steam turbine. We're going to place a power regulator down. Get rid of that one. And now let's place our turbine. So you'll see how this one works. It takes the water source block away and essentially it becomes steam you know it, it gets superheated becomes steam and it generates power now looking at the regulator it generates eight joules per second but the problem is it only lasts one slime fun tick so every half of a second we're waiting for the water source block to renew so while it does generate eight joules per second it really only generates four because for half a second it's not generating power while it's waiting for the water to come back and me personally, this is why I would not be building this one. Now, if you were to build a long stretch of these, let's say seven to one side of the regulator, seven to the other, and you had a 15 by three water source tank to work with, these could be very productive in the very beginning because they're not cost expensive. They, they don't cost a whole lot to build. So when we go into the eco power generators, a turbine is a steel rotor, electric motor, two single ingots, and a copper wire. It, it's relatively inexpensive for the power. So if you've got a lot of these out of the gate, it's a good start, but it's not for me. All right, let's move up to the EcoPower Advanced Wind Turbine. Now, it is advanced because it generates more power. It has the exact same requirements. It's 12 joules per second with no buffer. It does work day and night, but again, it doesn't work in the nether because of water. All right, so let's set this one up with a power regulator and let's hit the water. So same thing, it needs that massive water source block. So again, these can work with enough of them put together to where you could get a good amount of power out of the gate. So what's the difference between the regular and the advanced? Well, the advanced does include a regular, another rotor, four brass ingots, and a copper wire. So again, relatively cheap early on. There's not a lot to it. But again, at only six joules per tick, 12 per second, there still aren't a whole lot of machines that can run that low. So you will need multiples of these. And like I said, if you do a 15 by three, and you put your regulator over the center water block, run seven to one side, seven to other, you will always have the water sources being renewed, and it would be a relatively productive farm for power. On average, you would be pulling in, you know, you figure 14 times 12, minus half of that because of the water source blocks renewing, you're still generating 84, uh, 84 joules per second. 
Now that can get you a good starter farm. Let's move up. Let's talk about the EcoPower Carbonado steam turbine. Now this one is definitely much more advanced than the advanced. 26 joules per second, still no buffer, still runs day and night, still will not run in another. Let's go ahead and grab this and set it up. All right, we'll give it some power, give it a regulator, and here we go. So again, 26 joules per second, same thing though, it still has to wait for the water source block to come back. Now, if you were to do this 15 by three with seven on one side, seven on the other, now you're really generating some good power. So again, it's not a bad power source. It just doesn't have that constant source of stream of power because we have to wait for the water source blocks. So moving up a little bit on this scale, if I were going to start, I would be looking at the wind turbines from EcoPower. Now these start a little bit higher than the steam turbines and the other advantage is they don't require that water source, right? For wind, uh, wind, simple wind turbine is 10 joules per second, no buffer. It runs day or night, but the other advantage is it does run in the nether. So if you are in the nether, you can create this. Now I'm going to try very carefully here. Let's see if I can hit this. Nope, oh, I missed. There we go. Now, one thing about the wind turbines, it cannot have a block in front of it. Otherwise, wind can't reach it. So we'll put our regulator out one more. Now you'll see it's generating 10 joules per second. There does have to be one block in front of it. So if you were to set these up in a chain, you would actually have to come back two blocks. You can't put them back to back. What if I were to run them this way and have the wind turbine face us, right? And run them sideways, same thing. There has to be a solid block of air around them. So it does give advantages that it will work in another if you want to set up another base. It's a very small amount of power, but there are options where this would work. So setting this up in terms of multiple farms, you could do three on one side of the regulator, three on another, three that way, three that way. And if you stacked uh, energy connectors, you could build a tower of these and get a fairly decent amount of power. Let's go take a look at the advanced wind turbine. This one generates a little bit more. It's 26 joules per second. Can I hit this? Oh, look at that. Same thing, needs to have an open space between the regulator. I said 26, but it's generating 22. Let's check the guide just to make sure I didn't have a typo. I'm very well, it may have typed the wrong number on my board. Yep, it, I did. It is 22. That is correct. So, signs wrong. Ah, get out of there. 22 joules per second, day or night, no buffer, works in another. All right, we've got one more. We now have also the Carbonado wind turbine. Now, this is where the price starts going up a little bit. When we're looking at the turbine, we're talking first of all the advanced, but two Carbonados. So, we're starting to get a little bit pricier here, but in comparison, the magnesium salt generator is very comparable. And that requires some motors and I think electromagnet and a couple other things, but it doesn't require carbonados. So this is a little, to me, this is a little pricey for the power yield, but it's not bad. It could be much worse. Two carbonados, two motors, uh, three ferrosilicon, and another rotor plus the advanced wind turbine. But we are getting up there a little bit. So let's grab this one. Let's see if I can't hit the top of this on the first crack again. Oh, just missed. It's just like ever so slightly off. Oh, bummer. Come on. You can see it. You can see it. Oh, all right. We'll cheat. Yeah, come on. Just get on there. There we go. All right. And let's give ourselves some power. There we go. Oh, look at that. Not good. Can we get rid of that one? That's annoying. Okay, so we are getting 46 joules per second, just as we should. And again, that's a good stream for a basic dust farm. 46 joules will get you up and running with a few machines. All right, now we're going to move on, and this is where the game changes. We're going to get into Infinity Expansion, and we're going to talk about 
do any of these actually you know what let's just talk about it right now of the two infinity expansion eco generators neither one of them are affected by the light expansion nerf so these numbers are straight up now in the guide you're going to see different numbers of what it generates slime fun changed how often it ticks from 12 minecraft ticks to 10 minecraft ticks in other words instead of roughly 1.83 times it's twice per second now that it ticks and unfortunately uh the lore in the guide just didn't get updated and i know riley's aware of it and he's going to change it so the guide is going to say roughly i think it's 8.33 joules per second and it's actually 10 and here's how we can tell we simply grab the hydro generator it's got a good buffer too it's got a 500 joule buffer we'll plop it down in the water give it some power and it's going to take just a minute for that generator to get going in the water this is normal don't freak out if it starts taking a while this is normal for that to get going even sometimes i kind of come over here and look and see okay well we haven't stored anything it's not generating yet give it a minute and it usually will kick in there we go so a 500 joule buffer you know if it's running and you're able to turn your machines off that can buy you some precious time right if you're running because this one uh, runs at 10 joules per second. So let's say you had six of these. You're running 60 joules per second. And let's say your machines are running, you know, 65. Whatever it is in the beginning, you're just slightly off. If at nighttime, if you can, you know, stop one machine for a little bit, let those buffers build up, that's enough to run you through the day. Right? You, you shut one off at night of the machines. It slows your production down slightly. But it lets all those buffers build up to where during the daytime you can run all the machines and have enough then again you just shut one off at night you you actually run more by allowing the buffers to build up all right so there we go we've got our 500 joule buffer and our 10 joules per second nice machine i've got a few of these in my uh, skyblock server that we do on saturday morning live streams by the way if you'd like to join us uh 9 a.m central standard time in the u.s we'd love to have you all right, so let's move on to the other Infinity Expansion. We've built this one on our Skyblock World as well. The Infinity Expansion Reinforced Hydro Generator. Look at this baby. This is a good start. 90 joules per second, a great buffer at 4,500. It runs day or night, but because there's water, it won't run in another. Now, I do want to show you the recipe between these two. So let's hold it over to Infinity Expansion. We'll start in the basic machines. So the first hydro generator, it's not bad. It's four mag steel, two machine circuit, a magnet, a couple of buckets. Relatively inexpensive. Now, granted, you do need the carbon to make the steel, but it's still not that bad. What about the reinforced? You got to go to the advanced machines. This one's a little expensive. Four hydro generators, two machine circuits, two mag steel plates, and a machine core. And remember, you know machine cores you got machine plates which is 21 reinforced ingots plus four titanium this one's a little pricey for 90 joules per second okay it's a good machine it's got a lot of power it's got a great buffer but from a cost perspective it's going to cost more than the next ones we're going to review and it produces a little bit less power however it is still a good generator so let's fire this one up just to show it. The buffer is going to take a while to get there, right? A 4,500 joule buffer, but you can see it's going up 90 joules per second. The guide shows, I believe it's 75. And again, that was simply just because of slime fun tick changes. The lore will be updated, hopefully not too long from now. All right, we have two other ones we're going to look at and compare these to the Infinity Expansions. They're from Dynatech. And these are the two of the beginning eco generators that i would take these are probably the only two generators that i will ever take over the infinity expansion generators most likely simply because they don't cost quite as much and they generate more power now let's get into the dynatech hydro generator let's look at the recipe for this all right dynatech i'm gonna go back one more okay generators hydro generator four aluminum one sulfate, one energy connector, and two stainless steel rotors. Relatively inexpensive. I would say pricing-wise about the same as IE's 
generator. But the difference is the basic hydrogen generator down here is 10 joules per second, but it has that buffer. Here, we have 32 joules per second with a much lower buffer, but me, I'm about to power. So I'm going to take the 32 joules per second. Same scenario, it will work day or night, and it does not work in the nether. So let's pop that one down, give ourselves a regulator. There's our 32 joules per second. Give the buffer a chance to kick in. All right, and then finally, the last one, Dynatex Hydro Turbine. So we're going to compare that to Infinity Expansion's Hydro Generator, the reinforced Hydro Generator, excuse me. Now, as far as a buffer, significantly less. Power generation, though, about 35% more. And let's look at the recipe comparison. This is where Dynatex wins. Four of them, just like IEs. However, it's only four reinforced alloy ingots in an 8-karat gold. This is much cheaper. It's, it's one-fifth of the amount of the reinforced. Actually, it's one-sixth. Because you need 25 reinforced ingots to make IEs. Here, you only need four. So, better production and a lower cost to make. Although, again, the downside is the much lower buffer. So if you're okay with a lower buffer, this is the one you want to go with. If you want the much greater buffer, then you want to go with the IE. All 10 of these generators are relatively lower power. They're starting generators for the most part in game. And there's absolutely, any one of these can do great. Like I said, the ones down here, the very truly basic beginning ones, with enough can be enough to power your farms. There's no reason why you couldn't use these. And you get a big enough water source, and it's probably going to simply just be going nonstop. You get the timing right, those things are going to fly. Guys, I really appreciate you uh, looking at my stainless steel rotor that's on my head, or simple steam turbine, one of the two. But appreciate you taking the time to watch this. Next one is going to be the basic electrical ones that generate between 1 and 100 joules. We'll spend a lot of time talking about those. But thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I really appreciate it. it. Tells me that you appreciate what we're doing here. And don't forget, when you play Slime Fun, you gotta go boomer or you gotta go home. We'll see you later.